Hi everyone, Lee Packett here and you are watching The Business of Law, the only web TV show focusing on the challenges and opportunities facing the legal profession. We have a great show today. Professor Rebecca Royfe at uh, New York Law School is joining us. Full disclosure, New York Law School is a client of Mimesis. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's nice to be here. So you have a big paper coming out in a couple weeks on the future of legal education and I found it interesting because it pushed back on the notion of bifurcation within the legal education space. That is to say the Yales and Harvards of the world are going to go forward and they're going to go on with business as usual but the lower tier schools are essentially going to become vocational uh, training centers. You disagree with that notion. Why is that? Yes, I do. I disagree with that because I think all lawyers are engaged in a negotiation between private interests and shared norms as they're articulated in the law. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that well, you need a complex understanding, not just of how to file a form or how to do the basic tasks, but of what the law is, how it becomes that way, and what it should be. And this is a topic that has been discussed a little bit recently because it came out in Brian Tamanaha's uh, famous book, but uh, we were talking earlier before, there's actually a longer history uh, to this debate. Can you walk us through that? There is. So um, in 1921, Alfred Z. Reed came out with a report that recommended exactly the same thing that Brian Tamanaha suggests that we do in his book, the bifurcation or stratification mm -hmm. that you just described. And in his report, he suggests that we divide into two law schools, two types of law schools, one practice-based and the other um, a basically more theoretical or, or jurisprudential approach to the study of law. And um, the ABA, the bar, reacted violently against this proposal and essentially suppressed it. But this notion that at the end of the day law schools need to change and they need to get cheaper, that's something you fundamentally agree with, right? I do agree with that. I just think that the way in which we do it, we ought to be very careful um, and that Reed's approach, so um, Brian Tamanaha actually uses this history to support his conclusion and he says Reed was this great hero and the bar came along and suppressed his report, rejected his report because it was raced as xenophobic and classist. Mm -hmm. But in fact, Reed's proposal itself was filled with the same presumptions um, and the same kind of classism and xenophobia and fear of newcomers that the bar's reaction was. So I think rather than trade our current problems in for different problems, the um, uh, articulation of, um, of class and race differences and the calcification of that, we ought to come up with a more creative solution to our problem, the cost of legal education. That's the million dollar question here. How do yes, you do it? it? Um, so uh, a lot of people have been coming up with various different solutions. What I think is consistent with the very important value, which I said to start with, which is that every lawyer ought to have some complex understanding of how to negotiate private interests with shared norms. In order to do that, we have to think about very carefully about what all lawyers ought to be educated in. And all lawyers ought to have some kind of understanding of theory, whether it is jurisprudence, politics, history, sociology, but that then you could have off points, you could have on ramps and off ramps, you could have licensing, you could have something equivalent to nurse practitioners where a lawyer has a shorter education and the degree shows that they've had a shorter education, but in my mind what has to be is that anybody who calls themselves a lawyer has some theoretical training in what the law is and what it ought to yeah, be. Yeah, that, that concept of different uh, variations of licensing that, that mm -hmm. comes out of legal education, it's interesting because I think it helps students get to where they need to be, but it also helps law schools with the revenue side of things. Uh, to that point, I think it was yesterday, a report came out, uh, University of Arizona Law School just announced that they're going to offer a BA, an undergraduate degree in law. Um, interesting concept. Do you think that that's the way to go? Um, well, so a lot law of schools start offering BAs. I, 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 I'm skeptical about what a BA in law can really do for you. So, I do think we ought to 
push um, legal education into undergraduate institutions and have a lot of partnerships. But um, in my mind, what you would need to do in order to make that successful would be um, to, ha to be very careful in thinking about what is actually in that curriculum and what those people are qualified to do once they graduate. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's an interesting concept, but it's going to be even more interesting to see how it plays out. Rebecca, fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for coming Thank by. Thank you. That's what we have for this week. If you'd like to see more of the stuff we're working on, be sure to go check us out on YouTube, and you can always follow us on Twitter. I'm Lee Pacquiao. Thanks for watching.